on Tuesday, October 17, 1989, at 17 hours, 4 minutes, 15 seconds, Pacific Daylight Time. A strong motion earthquake emanated from a location 60 miles south-southeast of San Francisco, near Loma Prieta, in the Santa Cruz mountain range. The main shock, the largest to strike the San Francisco Bay Area since 1906, ruptured a segment of the San Andreas Fault and had a magnitude of 7.1. On October 26, 1989, at the direction of CHP Commissioner Maury Hannigan, a special investigation team comprised of accident reconstruction specialists from the California Highway Patrol was formed. This team was established to identify, collect, and document all of the factual information and available data from the earthquake-induced failure and collapse of two major bi-level elevated interstate freeway structures. Two 50-foot-long roadway segments of Interstate 80 on the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge collapsed along with a three-quarter mile long segment of Interstate 880 freeway known as the Cypress Street Viaduct. Take Accident, Cypress and West Grand do. They're advising major injuries. We're attempting to get 1141. So we have a 50 foot section which is collapsed from westbound into eastbound. Said uh, the upper deck collapsed onto lower deck. From westbound into eastbound, east of TI. How is it all emergency? Yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Steve Barnes. I'm at West Grand Avenue. Uh -huh. The Cypress section of the West Grand Freeway has come down. I saw at least three or four trucks come over the top. I think the whole section of the, the overhead just collapsed. The okay. The overhead. Our uh, Cypress structure in Oakland has just fallen through. We'll check the ambulance response is 3-2 in Cypress. We can go to 880 in Cypress. Yeah. You heard me. Big truck is upside down. Man, this is all the Quite some time. 
We've got a lot of freeway down here. Yeah. 232 is refueling in Calstar and Life Support. are going to send as many helicopters as possible, but they'll have to go to the cypher structure first. We have people trapped underneath. Three pillars down in the center section. There should be two right people. You might be able to use your 24-foot ladder to get to them. We need a bumper. We have a semi-trailer truck on fire under the collapse portion of the freeway. This is engine one. Check, uh, get a battalion sheet down here. We've got four injured now here. Watch, get some aftershocks. We just saw one. Set. On the freeway collapse, there's a multi-casualty unit at 17th and Cypress. Bring all your injuries to 17th and Cypress. Uh, we'll need a couple ambushes if you've got them in your hip pocket at 32nd in uh, the freeway collapse. Down the block, it's uh, real bad down here, Andy. Then Cypress incident, they're working on extrication of three children. I was part of this clock for a while, but I don't have any company up that way, and we have fire and people trapped. Port, uh, people trapped at that end and just begin to work their way down to West Grand Avenue. Yeah, they have people trapped on Cypress. They want you to respond to Cypress and work your way towards West Grand Avenue. They have people trapped all along. Uh, we're going to work our way all the way down. Uh, you've got rescues going independently with, with people with contractor and equipment. We've got cops, we've got CHP, we've got civilians. So what we need to do is start probably working our way down, keep one lane of traffic clear, I'll work our way into each incident and get an analysis. Uh, well, we've got about a half a mile of a collapse structure. Every bit is going to have to be searched. You're going to have to pull out the stops and call for a general alarm. Hey, Buffalo one is on Cypress. At 5.35 p.m., 31 minutes after the earthquake, a 1980 Mercury Zephyr, driven by a 23-year-old woman, entered the westbound upper deck of the Bay Bridge and drove eastbound in the wrong direction for approximately two miles. The vehicle was traveling at approximately 49 miles per hour when it became airborne and flew 35 and one-half feet across the gap and impacted the fallen portion of the upper roadway deck. This car managed to get on the bridge. It tried to fly across this 50-foot gap and didn't make it. After impact, the front wheels became caught and suspended the vehicle and its occupants high above the lower deck. extricated and transported to Letterman Army Hospital by Coast Guard helicopter. The driver of the vehicle was pronounced dead on arrival. Her brother was hospitalized with major injuries. 
the results of the California Highway Patrol's investigation revealed that the driver did not appear to brake and took no other apparent evasive action before driving into the gap created by the collapse of the westbound deck. An examination of the driver's side restraint system indicated it was not in use at the time of impact. The passenger, however, was wearing a seatbelt and survived. Oakland 2, this is Chief 2. Stand by, Chief. Engine 5, I'll check for your ETA. They all kept on you if you've got one available. Yeah, I think we're clear on the upper deck. All the damage is going to be in between decks. Hawk 1, disregard your response to Vernon. Chief, uh, you are to respond to 32nd and Cypress. Check 1. Check 1. Oakland. In one crushed car, a seven-year-old boy was trapped beneath the body of his dead mother. To save the boy, the mother had to be removed. Surgeon James Betts. The decision was made at that time to actually remove as much of her as we could, knowing that we couldn't totally extricate her. The other surgeon and I decided that the best way to do this would be to literally divide her body, and that's what we did. The boy was still trapped, and doctors were forced to amputate part of his leg. And I literally had to lie on my stomach um, on the corner of the back seat of this car um, to reach down inside to get to his leg. I think deep in my heart, I felt that if it were my child or, or the family would be able to be there, that they would agree with any decision possible to go ahead and save the life of this boy. As several agencies converged on the structure, it became obvious that heavy construction equipment would be the only means of accessing the trapped bodies. Once the location of all of the vehicles was established, special cement cutting tractors were used to open large holes over the crushed vehicles. This allowed for access to the trapped victims, some of whom had been in vehicles that were now compressed to 12 inch high slabs. Others were badly disfigured or burned beyond recognition. This made the coroner's identification process and the California Highway Patrol's vehicle identification process very difficult. It took a total of 10 days to recover all of the 41 bodies. Four days after the earthquake, a Caltrans engineer investigating a dark, unstable section of the Cypress observed movement in a crushed car. An immediate rescue effort ensued. 57-year-old male by the name of Buck, B-U-C-K, first name, last name Helm, H-E-L-M-S. He was just um, extricated and removed uh, from a location around 28th Street. The bus town is at Highland Hospital in Oakland. The news there is... Because the uncollapsed portion of the 32-year-old viaduct was severely damaged, a decision was made to immediately begin demolition. Dismantling of 80,000 tons of concrete and steel rubble continued until early 1990.
Once removed, the surface roadway known as Cypress Street was repaired and reopened. Construction on the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge began in July of 1933. On November 12, 1936, the five and a half mile long span opened for traffic. The Bay Bridge is the world's largest span and is the only bridge to incorporate four major types of bridge construction. The bridge carries 250,000 vehicles a day, the third largest traffic volume in the United States. At the collapse site, a steel tower supports the roadways 200 feet above the San Francisco Bay. When the earthquake struck, a force of two million pounds sheared 40 one-inch thick bolts. These bolts were all that secured the entire eastern portion of the bridge to the tower. As the roadways began to move, the upper and lower decks were pulled off their supports and collapsed. The blue vehicle was nearly stopped when it rode the top deck downward. The van was struck by the falling upper deck and was catapulted off the collapsed lower deck. The red car slowed and barely nosed over into the open gap. Construction crews worked 24 hours a day for 30 days to complete the repairs needed to reopen the bridge. They removed the damaged 160 ton roadways, then realigned the 3,000 feet of bridge from the tower to Oakland. And finally, the roadways were paved and the bridge reopened November 17, 1989. Cypress Structure Viaduct was California's first double-deck freeway. One and a half miles long, it opened in June of 1957 at a cost of $9 million. Normally, there would be approximately 200 vehicles on both levels of the three-quarter mile section that collapsed. However, there were only 107 vehicles caught on the upper and lower decks of the structure when it fell. At the time of the structure's collapse, most vehicles had slowed from 59 miles per hour to an average speed of approximately 38 miles per hour on the southbound upper deck, and from 57 miles per hour to approximately 32 miles per hour on the northbound lower deck. The majority of the 58 vehicles on the lower deck were crushed by the falling upper deck or drove into the collapsed cement and steel support beams. Of the 49 upper deck vehicles, some were slammed into the roadway surface. Others were catapulted over raised sections of exposed freeway or collided with other vehicles. Six vehicles were launched from the upper deck and fell to the surface streets below. The California Highway Patrol's analysis of vehicle motion indicates that the Cypress structure began collapsing at four separate sites. Four seconds after the structural motion was perceived by people driving on the viaduct. The progressive failure radiated north and southward from each of these sites. Approximately two seconds later, the entire structure had collapsed. This is only a summary of the California Highway Patrol's response and findings concerning the October 17, 1989 seismic shaking of the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge and the Cypress Street Viaduct. Two of the effects of the Loma Prieta earthquake Into eastbound, east of TI. Do you have anyone trapped inside? Uh, we're, we're at the incident at 880 along Cypress. We have a complete structural collapse of the entire freeway between the streets of, between 17th Street, as far as I can see, going towards 32nd. So we're going to need some trucks down here as soon as you can get them. Truck is upside down. Oh, truck at 32nd of Cypress. The entire overhead of the freeway is down all the way to uh, Highway 580. We need a truck company at 32nd of Cypress. Damage is going to be in between decks with people trapped. So let's start to uh, 